to just for, what am I trying to say? It was funnier in my head. Hey everybody, welcome back to Messy Vegan Baker. I'm Christina. So I was re-watching Gilmore Girls because I love that show. And there's an episode where they're celebrating Rory and so Emily Gilmore has them over for dinner. She decides to make one of Rory's favorite desserts and normally it's pre-packaged, but <laughs> At one point, Lorelai's like, how long does it take to take them out of the box? She was like, she didn't buy them, she's making them. And I thought that was really funny. Plus, it gave me an idea for this week's episode. Yeah, that's actually like the only, <laughs> that's the intro. So, this week, I'm going to be making vegan Twinkies with a twist. Or should I say, a swirl. <laughs> it's funny because... You'll be seeing the picture when I edit this so you'll actually understand. And then I was looking at it and I was like, wait, Twinkies are not the swirl, they're the little thing and then they have the, f the, the filling inside. They didn't want to make a mold for them, so I decided why not just make Twinkies my own version because I'm already making them vegan and they're homemade, so like, I don't know, why not make them swirls? Because that's going to be a million and a half times easier than trying to do that, so. Here we are. I'm a little nervous because it calls for a lot of eggs and the fat in there is what makes it spongy. <laughs> but I figured the best one would be aquafaba because it does whip up really well and a lot of it is just whipping it and getting air in there. I'm just worried about the fat content. However, I feel like it could work. I mean, honestly, I'm really just hoping that it's like a cake that I can roll. That's, that's what we're going for. But I figured if I add some cream of tartar, then it should be good. Without further ado, let's get baking. So, so I put par parchment paper in an 18 by 13 ish pan. Mine's like 18 by 12, but a really big wide pan that's super shallow because that's the goal. Greased it and put some flour in there. So it's ready to go, and the oven is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This book, or uh, this recipe is from Cook's Illustrated again, so. Except for the filling. So I put the flour, the salt, and the baking powder in a separate bowl, and I just mixed it together to make sure it was all, you know, mixed. So that's there and set aside and ready to be folded in, which reminds me. I kind of remembered this time. We are going to take the aquafaba, which um, this one calls for five eggs and three tablespoons of aquafaba equals an egg, which is 15 tablespoons, or if you don't want to do that, it is three fourths cups plus three tablespoons. You're welcome. Um, and then I'm not sure how much cream of tartar to put in, but from my macaroon video, or macaron, they did a half a tablespoon, so I feel like if I do, which would be Huh, math. So if I did one teaspoon, that'd be a little less than half, and this is a little less than the amount that was in the other recipe, so I feel like that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll have to add a teaspoon of vanilla and some sugar. So we are going to start to whip this up, and then I'm gonna add the cream of tartar and the sugar, and what you want is for the sugar to kind of get mixed in. So essentially just like the macarons, because why not? It feels pretty smooth. There's still a few granules in there, but I'm gonna put the vanilla in there and then just keep whipping it until very thick and voluminous. Okay, so that's pretty voluminous, I will say. I'm not totally sure how whipped these need to be, but, but I'm gonna say that's good because this is like tripled in size, I think, or at least doubled. Um, so now we're just gonna add all this stuff. There's like so little dry ingredients compared to wet ingredients. And now we're going to gently fold. Do you believe this is all mixed in and ready to go? I think it has a good texture. Um, it's almost like a little too whipped actually, but it is a good thin batter, which from all the videos I've seen is what you want. Well, I'm gonna stick this in the oven. I <sighs> uh, hope it works and I'll see you when it is baked. So mine bakes about 11 minutes. I think it should have baked a little longer because I think it's supposed to be more like a golden brown, but you know, the edges were burning and I didn't want to over bake it because it was kind of springy. So I think the main 
Well, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna tell you everything that I did. I baked them for like 11 minutes. Before they come out, you want to make sure that you have a clean dish towel. Uh, sprinkle it with powdered sugar, which I thought was supposed to be to help it unstick, and I think it does. Maybe I just need to sprinkle more on there. Um, and then, yeah, just have that ready to go. So then when you take it out, you can cut it away from the sides, although mine didn't need that. Then you take the parchment paper and you flip it onto the towel, and then you pull the parchment paper away, which I was having some issues. So again, I think it was like half underbaked and probably didn't grease it well enough. So just make sure you grease it really well and, you know, bake it fully. <laughs> I did that, and then normally if you're making an actual Swiss roll, you wanna roll it the long way, um, so not how I did it. But because I was making Twinkies, I decided, well, sorry, you wanna roll it the short way. That's how they say. So like the shorter end of the cake is facing you and then you roll that away from you, essentially. You know? So I did it where I rolled the long end to the other long end, if that makes sense. So that way I would have smaller swirls and I could have, you know, I could cut them and make them into Twinkie sizes. So that's why I did mine like that. Do whatever you want if you're making Twinkies. Then you just let it cool. So you roll it up and you just let it sit there and cool down because you're training the cake to be rolled that way. So that way when it does cool down, they're like used to stretching and stuff. So then I made the whipped cream filling stuff. I'm not really sure what's supposed to be in Twinkies. We're going with whipped cream because I think that's what it's supposed to be. I used full fat coconut milk. You probably should use cream if you really wanna get that light fluffiness in there. I just didn't feel like using cream because I had more milk. But I used that and then I put a little bit of vanilla in and then I put, I don't know how many, like tablespoons of powdered sugar. I just put in there until it was like a consistency and taste that I wanted. So I will go back and count them. And then once that was ready, I put it back in the fridge just to kind of cool it and try to firm it up a little bit more. And then I attempted, <laughs> well, I did, but um, I unrolled it. I was having issues. Again, I don't think I put enough pow powdered sugar on the bottom but I also think that, again, this was like slightly underbaked still, so it's gonna be stickier. But I unrolled it, I put the cream on there, I rolled it back up, and then I cut it. And um, that is where we are at. So I put these in the fridge again, and then I just sprinkled a little bit more powdered sugar on top to try to make them a little prettier. I have tasted them, they do taste amazing. I think they taste like Twinkies, kind of. I mean, you can never get it exactly, because let's be real, those things have a ton of chemicals in them. So I think taste-wise, we're on point, which is really exciting. Look-wise, we've got a ways to go, but that's okay. I'm honestly just impressed and happy that it turned out and that I had a sponge cake batter. So yeah, is it perfect? No, not not really, no. But it is, it is here, it is, something I can eat and enjoy. So what I think happened, A, I think I did underbake it a little bit, but also I think next time, like I said, I was worried about the aquafaba not having enough fat in there. So I might, oh, there's too many variables, but I definitely wanna add like full fat coconut milk in there next time and do like half aquafaba, half coconut milk because that will have the fat in there, but then we'll have the fluffiness of the eggs and I think that'll work. I also saw another vegan recipe that said that. So I think we're gonna do that next time and then I might cook down the aquafaba so it is more of that protein and it can hopefully hold its shape better. I think that's a thing. We're gonna say it is. But they did roll. I mean, you can't really tell just because everything is essentially white. <laughs> but it's fine. I think I might try to make ho-hos next time because I'll still get to work on the sponge and see if that works better, but it'll be something different. I will make sure to put those notes in either the description box or my blog, I'm not really sure. Even if I don't put it on my blog, you guys should go check it out because it's really pretty and I have a lot of fun recipes. If you try them, let me know, that would be so cool. Also, if there's ever anything where you're like, this is unclear or I tried it and it didn't work, let me know um, nicely, please. I'm a little disappointed that they're not perfect. They didn't turn out you know, exactly like I wanted it to. But at the end of the day, I realized that I really wanted to start my channel because I am terrified of baking sometimes, especially new things like sponge cake. I wanted to kind of show people like 
Sometimes you have successes and you didn't even think you would and sometimes you fail and that's okay. It's part of baking. I'm pretty sure even professional bakers fail sometimes and it's just because something happens. So also it's just kind of part of learning, you know? It's it's a good life lesson too, not to be too like deep and thoughtful or something, but it's just you fail and it's okay, you know? You sometimes are frustrated and feel like it's the end of the world, but at the end of the day, it's okay because sometimes your fail failures are more important because you learn from them, and that is what this one is. So I tried it thinking it could work, it could not work, and it kind of worked better than I thought. And now I kind of have a better idea of where to go next. So don't be scared to bake. It's not always gonna turn out. Just try to learn from it, and you'll improve every time, I promise. <laughs> There's my little philosophical life lesson there for you. <laughs> because I'm sure that's what you're looking for when you're watching a baking show. This ending has been super long, I apologize, but I'm getting better intros. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, hello, welcome, it's so exciting. If you liked this video, I come out with videos every Friday at 1 p.m., so you can hit that like button and that subscribe button if you want. And if you are not new here, if you are a regular, I guess you could say, I don't know, it's like a restaurant term. I don't know the YouTube term term, but that's okay. Hello, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting and liking. I appreciate it. I get really excited, like <gasps> I comment. So it's really fun. Thank you so much, you guys. And I hope you were entertained and or learned something. I definitely learned a lot of things today. And yeah, I will see you lovely humans next week. Bye.